to cover one of the more basic questions that we often get is uh, what are the volcanoes that make up Hawaii Island, right? And so Hawaii Island has the five volcanoes that are on land, Kilauea, they'll kind of outline their shapes, something like that. It's Kilauea. Mauna Loa, which is everything on this side of Kilauea, all the way up to in there, and all the way to North Kona, and it goes around Hualalai, and then South Kona, and all the way back over here. That's all Mauna Loa. It last erupted in 1984. Kilauea, of course, is active today. Uh, we have to our uh, far west, Hualalai, last eruption in 1801. That's, just, that's only popping up in this area right over here. Uh, this lava flow over here is the one from Hualalai. That's a more, more recent one. Mauna Kea is four and a half thousand years ago was the last eruption. It kind of comes up something like this. And Kohala. 120,000 years ago is the last volcano that makes up Hawaii Island. And so a geologist will call a volcano active if the volcano erupted in the last 10,000 years. We've kind of mentioned that before. So um, here we are. This volcano is not active and it may be called extinct. Extinct not meaning that it will never erupt again, but that its main magma pathways uh, uh, are not the regular, are, I mean, are, are the first phase of young eruption is over, right? And it may rejuvenate in a, in a young eruption, but um, it's out of its active phase. Mauna Kea we'd call active but dormant four and a half thousand years ago. Um, Hualalai active for sure, uh, 219 years. Mauna Loa, a little bit less than that, active and dormant. Kilauea active and erupting. To our south, we have Loihi. 1996 was its last confirmed eruption by submarine. And uh, it's had magma movements for sure, um, but last eruption was 96. And off to our northwest, submerged in the ocean is Mahukona volcano, which was thought to have erupted 470,000 years ago or so. All right, so that one um, long since extinct, right? Okay, so we'll move on. Um, we can kind of take this view uh, from. Um, University of Hawaii Manoa School of Earth Sciences and we can see imagine what the mantle plume or this kind of hot spot as it's often called is coming up underneath Mauna Loa volcano Kilauea volcano and Loihi volcano right here right so somewhere an area that kind of encompasses all three of those summits of those volcanoes is this area coming up now why do I have it labeled mantle plume and not hot spot because there's been some debate about how hot is that material and how, how accurate is it think of it as only as a hot material rather than a plume of some kind at, of some mixed hot and other property material. So uh, within, within the, the geological community, it's a little more accurate to say mantle plume. But I certainly understand when you guys say hot spot, this is what you're talking about. And we won't get too picky. So we have the Pacific Ocean crust moving to the northwest about four inches a year, uh, kind of in that direction, and that's why we have this trail of other islands off in that direction. Um, it's often portrayed that the mantle plume, the hotspot, is stationary in one spot, and if we kind of start off with that more simple assumption, you can kind of see that the moving ocean crust would leave a trail of other islands behind it. You can kind of see that in this first view here. All right, so we'll zoom out a little bit more, and here we have Hawaii Island, which has an age next to it here, 0 0.7 million years to present, right? Uh, where the hotspot currently sits underneath. And what exactly is a hotspot? A mantle plume. It's a hypothetical hot, narrow mantle upwelling that has unique physical and chemical characteristics. So when we say hot, how hot is it actually? Because everything down there is hot. This zone right in here may be at 1450 Celsius or 2650 Fahrenheit, right? Only 150 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than a surrounding material, which is also quite hot at 1300 Celsius or 2350 Fahrenheit. And we're talking about this is all underneath the lithosphere, right? So you may have heard of me say a few terms so far. I've talked about the crust. That's this upper section in here. And the upper mantle is from there to there. 
and together they form the lithosphere. Litho meaning rock, and so this is the kind of the, the behaving as a rock part of the Earth, right? That the upper mantle that's still solid, and the whole crust of the Earth together, the lithosphere. And so the whole thing all together, maybe in order of 50 to 75 miles down, maybe 120 kilometers down. And this is obviously a variable thing. It varies from place to place. It's an area of active research, and we really don't know what this looks like in here. This is just one Wikimedia Commons image uh, that kind of shows what we're dealing with here, right? And so we kind of have off to our northwest, Maui at less than 1 million year old, Mo'oka'i from 1.3 to 1.8, Oahu 2.2 to 2.3, Hawaii at 3.8 to 5.6, progressively older to the northwest. And that pattern is evident also on a globe. Here is our Big Island of Hawaii, and the Hawaiian chain goes to the northwest here, and then where it takes this bend from that point upwards, and it's all submerged, it's called the Emperor Seamount chain. So combined, that's the Hawaiian Emperor Archipelago. Right, this is a whole northern part over here submerged. Okay, so we're talking about this zone below the solid part of the Earth, right? this lithosphere that's overlain by the ocean. And from that hot spot, there's different feeders to different volcanoes. And there's one to Loihi, there's one to Kilauea, and there would presumably be one kind of back in here to Mauna Loa. Right? So that zone of deep earthquakes is in this zone right in here, this upper part of this feeder. And that's where it's kind of connecting into the volcanoes, but we're going to zoom back out from there and see where this actual thing comes from. And um, first we're going to kind of just review how this actually happens. So there is our hot spot down here in the more fluid mantle. And one thing you might notice is that it's injecting feeders into each volcano. And as the plate moves to the northwest, you can see an island of different volcanoes form here on the surface. And you kind of see that the feeder is kind of get carried along with the crust, and so you can actually have lava that's entrained in a volcano that's not directly over the hot spot still. And the volcano is going to take a while to, to die off for that, right? You can also see a little bit of this bend. The crust actually bends downwards from the weight of these islands over this more fluid, lower medium of the, of the mantle. And the other thing you can see is, as the plate moves, this plume kind of gets dragged along with it, right? So it kind of wants to move over in a direction of plate direction as well. So this is a simple graphic. This is from Iris. I should uh, Iris uh, that slash earthquake right here. So we have some great animations and educational tools. So um, that is the hotspot track. And now we'll kind of zoom out a little bit more and we'll kind of see that that whole area we're looking at was down in here. And we can kind of see that we have French Frigate Shoals at 12.4 million years, Midway Atoll at 28.3, Daikakuji 47 million years, right at that bend. And for those of you curious about this bend, we will get to this. It's going to take a while to f figure out all the components to let us answer the question of why is there a big bend in this archipelago right here? which is something we'll certainly address. We have Koko at 49 million years, Mintoko, Suiko, 56, 61, and all the way up here, Detroit Seamount at 80 million years old. Meiji, possibly around 85. Some of the dating is a little suspect, but that's the ballpark of what we're, what we're talking about here. And so I can kind of zoom into, maybe I don't know if I can or not, but if you, you superimpose that on a map of the continent of North America, you kind of see that if we put the Big Island at the southern tip of Florida, that spans a distance all the way onto the main land of Alaska past the, that panhandle. So it's, it's a very, very long, huge feature on the surface of the Earth. It's a major feature that has geologists from the whole world uh, researching, and so we have quite a lot of researchers from all over um, asking questions about this, like, what, why is there a bend? And um, some things you might notice is, uh, where is the start of this thing? There's a big boundary right here where it may have been consumed already by the subduction process of the Earth, but where could it have gone? Um, you might say, 
why does it look like much more continuous a line over here? And then it's, it seems like it stops and it starts and it stops and it starts. And then why does it seem like it's very weak for long periods of time? And then maybe more recently, it's been more strong, producing more landmass underwater. So all interesting questions. And as the hotspots uh, uh, stays relatively in the same spot and the plate moves away from it, those northwestern islands over time will sink into atolls, right? And this classic process. So this is the volcanic island phase, and then this is the next two to five million years as the island sinks and erodes and the reef grows around it. And eventually after five to 10 and 10 to 30 million years, you have an atoll kind of formed over it before the whole thing kind of submerges even too deep for uh, a shallow reef to grow on it. And so that's what we have where some of our 80 million year old seamounts are way past this stage. But it's important to realize as a process when you're trying to study this feature. Um, so what scientists have done is they've gone and looked at the amount of land, not just uh, what's left above, but also what's bowing down into the mantle below. That's part of the effect that we see of these islands. So down here in the bottom, we have the age of volcanism. So essentially, Hawaii Island is over here on the left edge, and then Detroit Seamount is over here at the right edge. So from farther ago in time, we were having a fairly low volume of magma eruption, right? Kind of the best we can tell with some possible up and down periodicity, right? Maybe because uh, the mantle plume is getting dragged along and snapping back and dragging along and snapping back. That's one possible hypothesis of why it might do that kind of thing. But the longer term trend is clearly that in the last 30 million years or so, it started to rise at kind of an exponential rate. And so it's hard to, hard to uh, really compare the values right here at this very, very left end with the ones farther over because we have active volcanoes and we're out of equilibrium with this whole situation over here. Um, but there's still high values in here. You can kind of see that the trend is still real that really, especially in the last five million years, it's really skyrocketed, right? But in the last 30, it's gone up steadily for a while. So why, how come the hotspot's been putting out more value as well? I mean, um, that's interesting to think about as well. And we don't have all the answers, but we'll give you guys all the clues of how to think about this. That's all right. If you guys don't follow everything, you know, kind of just take, take what you like and what you will from this presentation.